All right, Cookie, we're here with the board. Um, uh-huh. We've got the sit, uh, the sit right, and we've just been talking about it, but sitting right at the top of the board is GDP. GDP. So where are we going to put the red well dot? It is well truly in neutral. If we get that next quarter being weak, even if it's plus 0.2, let alone anything negative, that'll be rapidly going to the easing column. But 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 consumer, uh, sorry, uh, our audience should be thinking to themselves: if GDP is negative oh. in March, what are you going to do with the red dot? Oh, the red dot's going to easing unambiguously, no, no question, no problem, okay. no question. Inflation, I'm moving to well, sort of neutral because I'm looking at that run rate. The 0.6 gives me confidence. The RBA will, not might. Six months ago, it might reach its inflation target. The answer is it will reach its inflation target without any more rate hikes. So that's into the neutral column. And right. they're two big changes from our last few um, checklists. Unemployment. Unemployment, I'm putting neutral. Because 3.9 is not bad. And, you know, and we're saying that the risk is 4.5. Well, let's see what those numbers are. And remember our checklist is on hard data, not on forecast. So when's the next, when's the next unemployment number? We get the next unemployment number in early February, in a couple of weeks. Right. So in two weeks' so time. So it's 4.2. Oh, it's 4.2. I'm moving that to easing. So right. when we have our next conversation, this could be completely different. different. Yep. Okay. Wages growth is neutral as well. 4%. I don't like the phrase, but I'll use it. Goldilocks. Not too hot, not too cold, but just right. Yep. A little bit of wages growth is good for everybody. Uh, firms can pay it. Employers think, oh, that's okay. So wages growth, I'm putting in the neutral column. International, I'm putting towards easing. So we, okay, China's okay. weak. So which Europe's international weak. are we talking about? So because you know US right. is going yeah. good. US is going okay. If it was just the US, I'd put it more in neutral because yeah. that's what they're telling us. But I look at Europe, which is a big part of the world economy. You know, China for Australia, that's absolutely critical. China, Japan, really, Korea. Yes, weak, weak as water. Right. In fact, the Chinese are cutting interest rates already. You know, wow. we sort of tend not to focus on Chinese monetary policy. It's a very different system to ours, massively different. But they're our biggest exporter. But they're our biggest exporter. So I'm moving that to slightly towards easing. House prices are coming off the boil. I don't think they, the RBA would say, well, that's fine. They're not hot. They're not cold again. Retail sales, unambiguously in easing. We consumers are being hit on the head with all those cost of living pressures, rate hikes, and those retail sales numbers for December, minus 2.7. That was a big fall. You remember the Black Friday increase yep. was only 1.6? Yep. Well, that's quite good. Minus 2.7. Look at the average of those two. You're at minus a half a percent per month. Which means everybody buys now these days. Less stuff. In November. Buying November. And at Christmas, I've already got my presents hidden yep. under the yep. under the cupboard. Yep. Consumer sentiment, weak as water. We're feeling gloomy. Building approvals, minus 9%. Bad. We need to build more. Business investment, you're not going to hike, but it's neutral. So we said before, business investment's probably going to be adding a little bit to growth. The firms are still building things. They're buying machinery and equipment. The mining sector's doing okay. So business investment's when's the next, okay. When's, when's the next business investment The next big number CapEx out? number comes out at the end of February. We'll right. have that for our next discussion. Good, and I, I think I, that'll be a nice little thing we could spend a couple of minutes talking about. Yeah, because i got a feeling that's not going to be as... Maybe starting to creep over towards the easing column. I, I just, ah, this is my next one, because that's business confidence. Because yeah. we know business... Because that business... Investment, the last one we've got for the September quarter. Mark, here we are in February. We haven't got the December quarter dating yep. yet. We but, you know, but business confidence, the NAB survey, I'm putting it on the edge of easing, their business conditions turning down. Right. Because yeah. NAB actually asks, it's a great survey because it's Alan. contemporary. Alan, Alan, Alan Oster. Oster. And they ask firms in January. So it's actually right up to date, post Christmas. They ask firms things like... They've been good in the past, though. They've been excellent. Excellent predictor of what's yep. happening. But they were, but, but their business confidence was Oh, okay business confidence was, was good. It was yep. good. The last couple of months, it's still down. It's things like, what are you expecting to happen to profitability? Down. What are you expecting to happen to uh, your hiring intentions? Down. What are you expecting to happen to your level of inventories? Or up. So you put all that into your sort of that mental picture you've got. And Alan's, Oster, the chief economist at NAB, is sort of saying, oh, look, you know, our numbers are looking pretty grim. You know, and he and he doesn't. He's been doing this for a long he's time. He's been for a long time, and he and he's not a headline grabbing sort of no, no, he's uh, a doomsday. Right, doomsday. No, he actually calls it commodities neutral. They're okay. We're doing okay. They're, yeah. If the oil price is at twenty dollars a barrel, and all these things that you put into the easing comp, it's okay. Stock market's booming. I just, oh, I'm putting I, I just, mate, I don't get it, but anyway, I don't get it, but it's booming. I, I won't put it. I'll, I'll, but, I'll well, put what, it towards what, what is that like? Oh, there's so, so much liquidity. And now that there's talk of this interest rate cutting cycle, people are saying, well, and government bonds have rallied, the, the yield has fallen in anticipation of these rate cuts. People are saying, well, equities are looking pretty good. And the mining companies are doing okay. The banks, 
bank share price, you know, CBA, what was that, 115, yeah. 116 bucks the other day? Record price. It just keeps going up. It has a little bit of a dip and it goes up. Dip goes up again. I think the banks are sort of saying that they've got you know, no, very little um, uh, provisioning for bad debts. You know, even though the unemployment rate's going up, we've had all these rate hikes. You know, the bad debts, which are, of course, poison for the banks, they're just doing, you know, bouncing along, doing whatever they're doing. And so also, it, you would expect the bad debts to um, not be as troublesome now because it looks like interest rates are going to come off at some stage. Indeed, and that's right. So people hang on. And the fact that house prices are going up, you know, and, if well anybody, and if anybody has to foreclose on the house right now, heaven forbid, the bank's going to sell it and yeah, because they have a, no debt. There's a buyer. So when house prices fall, that not only does a person losing their house lose, but the banks lose money. Yeah, yeah, potentially. Because they're, they're potentially, if they've got negative equity, because yeah. the banks sell the house for less than is owed. Yeah, yeah. And we're not in that position, so banks stop doing yeah. great. Well, it's, and it's, finally, it's just hard to work out, but when you see everything better. And current interest rates, 4.35, they are restrictive. The RBA acknowledged that. Everybody acknowledges that. So you can see that, say, compared with three or four months ago, where you had a few dotted in the tightening and neutral column, Almost everything's in the neutral to easing column right, right now. Is These ones are the important ones. When they start moving that way towards the easing side, that's when we're going to be seriously, seriously contemplating. Okay, so that's what I'm going to ask you. So let's pick up the the top three, for I give yep, or take. Yep. Um, where w those top three: GDP, inflation, and labour market or unemployment. Um, yep. The the next lot of data that comes out, um, if we see a shift in downward shift. Or an upward shift in um, uh, unemployment. Employment, yep. Um, what would you expect is going to happen? Oh, it, it, and in a funny way, this is sort of the the dil oh, dilemma. This is the sort of issue that the RBA and us and the markets have to focus on because some might go up, some might go down, and that's when you've got that difficulty. You hold steady when just say GDP surprises on the upside, but then we get unemployment going up as well. Oh, what do we do? Well, let's just wait and see how the dust settles. You know, that's again that quirky one month or one quarter of data can be anything. You know, we've been all burnt. Oh, I've been burned on that before, but if and this is why, maybe we need two more readings on these quarterly figures, the GDP. So we got one at the in early March, one in early June. This is where the June seventeenth board meeting, or sorry, late June, kind of twentieth of, of June board meeting becomes hot. critical. Yeah, because they'll not only have the December quarter, they'll also have the March quarter. And if those numbers, I know we're talking about negative, but even if they're 0.1 or 0.2. That's really that's weird. pathetic. That goes across because that will mean unemployment will be four point something, four yeah. and a half, and that'll mean that inflation will be coming down really rapidly. Yeah. So I think that's they're the three. If I was, I'd, I'd include wages. These other ones feed into those in a funny way. And as we've said many times, it's these top three or four that are the they're the ones that matter. So I'm going to be watching the wages numbers in the middle of February, the GDP numbers early March. The monthly labour force numbers come out in the middle of each month, so the middle of February, and then the middle of March, the middle of April, so we'll get them every month. And the inflation numbers, the quarterly numbers, we know we get monthly numbers nowadays, but April. the quarterly numbers come out at the end of April before the May board They come meeting. out around about Anzac Day. So, yeah, correct, correct. So, so those four numbers, GDP, inflation, yep. labour, unemployment, yep. wages, Yep. where can our audience see those? They, they have a look at the... ABS, abs.gov.au, Australian Bureau of Statistics, yep. gov.au. There's a calendar on yep. the left hand side. I look at this web page a hundred times. And it a day tells you when they're going to be. When announced. they're coming out. So you can actually see on their calendar, this is coming out on, I can't remember all the dates. Early March might be about the 4th or 5th or something. The next inflation, yeah, end of April. Labor market, middle of February. And the wages, middle of February. You will see them there. And look, you don't have to be as obsessive as I do. This is my job. But if you want to just sort of see, gee, what happened to those wages numbers? Did they go above 4%, below 4%, unemployment, above 4%, below 4%, you know. So, and sort of look at the numbers and look at the charts. And if wages, if unemployment's doing that, going up, it's bad. If GDP is going down, it's bad. You know, it, it, you know, you don't have to be an economist to work that out. You know, you can sort of see from those numbers. But abs.gov.au, have a look there. And all the banks, I think you can get access to their written reports. So if you look at you know, cba.com.au and nab.com, you know, whoever, and without giving Westpac, I'm not giving an ad for any of them. They're all excellent. They're all very good economists. And they'll have a write-up a few hours after each data release. You go into research somewhere on their web pages and read a little comment. It's usually only a page. You know, again, it's sort of not, you don't have to read you know, chapter and verse of it. Page, oh, this number was worse than expected or better than expected. This is what it means for the monetary policy outlook. All really good things that you can look at 
to see what on earth is happening in those critical indicators for not only just the economy, you know, how your business is going, how your job's going, but your interest rates as well. And so final call, February meeting, 6th of February, yeah. what are they going to say? No change, but they're going to drop, well, in my view, they're going to drop the bias to tighten because even when their December meeting, which was the last one they had, they said, yeah, if, if we have to move rates, they'll have to be up. So, you know, that, that, it was a very weak tight. So I want to talk bias. about language then, so. That's so language, not what they do, it's what they say. So, so okay. rates are on hold. I think so everybody's agrees. Rates are on hold. Yep. What are you going to be looking for in the language? The language will be to do with that inflation because they probably, or no, they almost certainly will be revising down their outlook for inflation. That number was lower than they were assuming because they published their forecast, which is good. You know, so, And that number that we saw, the 0.6, was about 0.3, 0.4 lower than they were thinking, just for that one quarter. And that's statistically significant. It's a big miss, again. Uh, unemployment's going up more than they thought. We're already at 3.9 in their December numbers. So the two things I'm going to be focusing on more, not so much GDP, it'll be what's happening to that inflation number, what's their analysis of that? Why did it fall more than we, were th we the RBA, were thinking? And that labour market, are we changing our view that the unemployment rate will peak at four and a half or are we going to rise it up to 4.75? If they start lowering that inflation forecast, lifting the unemployment forecast, then it's game on for those rate cuts again. And in fact, that's rba.gov.au on Tuesday, 2.30 Sydney it's time. It's actually 2.31. 231, you're giving it. <laughs> no, but it is it because is. I, I sit there and I click, took click, the, click, oh no. And it annoys the shit out of me. But and it never, you it never can see in. latest news, so you can see the one page summary, that's fine. But if you really want to be a, you know, a nerd and get into it, there's the 60 and 70 pages, and they've got fantastic charts, Mark. They're, yeah. they're really good. They're very good if you're So you it. go to the monetary policy section, oh, you don't have to print it out, you know, read it while you're trying to go to sleep. It'll definitely put you to sleep. Googie, <laughs> I'm going to see you in a couple of weeks. See you, mate. Thanks see you shortly. Thanks, Mark.